Hi, I'm Anjali Primlani, Executive Editor of eLearning Magazine and Government eLearning Magazine, and I am here this morning with Veronica Zaman, the Corporate Vice President of HR and Learning for Scripps Health, and with Stephanie Becerra, who is a learning leader at Scripps Health. And these are two of our Learning 100 honorees, and we're very proud to be with them here this morning. So well, you were honored in the area of performance. I'd like to know, how do you guys measure performance at Scripps Health? Um, so uh, actually, our chief executive officer, Chris Van Gorder, is very focused on uh, our organizational performance. The healthcare reform today that we're all encountering means that a hospital, a healthcare system, anything to do with how we care for people has to really be at a top level of performance in order to be successful. And uh, at Scripps Health, we take a lot of pride in the success. So a lot of the performance issues we have, of course, are related to finances, which any business and um, healthcare organization has to be focused on. But even more importantly, our quality uh, is, is the key uh, area that we measure our performance in. Uh, for us, if we don't take good care of our patients, we won't be able to have what we need to have in order to support our community. So most of our initiatives, we do the typical um, HCAPS, which is a healthcare measurement for how you measure patient satisfaction, patient quality. We have our typical performance metrics that we use. We focus on really creating employees who have the ability to understand the business side of what we do. Mm -hmm. How do you then apply that to healthcare to look at what your return on investments of your people, your resources? I don't know, Stephanie, any comments from what you work with? Stephanie is our learning leader in our Center for Learning and Innovation, and one of her roles is really around development opportunities for learning and how we translate that into to kind of return on investments. Yeah. I work really closely with um, programs that really support our employees because as we take care of them, they in turn are taking care of our patients. And so um, we really do support them to perform well in their roles mm -hmm. and we make sure that as an organization we have learning opportunities that way they can be the best in their, in their careers and their professions and that in turn makes our organization successful as we deliver quality care to our patients and our community. How do you measure and reward this performance? How do you support this entire initiative? We actually, I think, from an innovation perspective, um, that is one of the things uh, our corporate senior vice president um, for human resources, innovation, and performance management is Vic Busuchero. And over the almost 11 years now, I think that he's been at Scripps, his focus has been on that employee engagement process. How do you actually have an employee look at themselves as a part of a business model? And that is, is rewarded by them actually, we have for our employees, we have a program called Success Shares. And one of the key metrics that we look at that is our patient satisfaction. That really goes back to a patient's satisfaction with the quality of care they receive, our physicians you know, partnering with us to ensure that we're providing the right type of care. And so if we hit those metrics, they actually receive up to a week's pay. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we invest back in our employees. Of course, for our executive leadership team, there is um, what we call our management incentive program. We're given very strict requirements around quality. Mm -hmm. uh, if we don't hit certain measurements for that, uh, we don't actually have any type of merit reward that's aligned with it. We That also has a quality alignment with it, uh, a financial performance, and a community. One of the things with a not-for-profit healthcare system is that we are fortunate in that we have um, a particular status as to how we look at you know some of the reimbursement and the financial obligations that we have. We give back to our community uh, in huge numbers around learning mm -hmm. as well as other support events. We're very involved with uh, our military. Mm -hmm. You know, San Diego, we're in the San Diego metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. San Diego has a huge component of military folks. We have the naval area there, we have Camp Pendleton. And as such, we really work closely with them for the folks that are returning from overseas to help them enter mm -hmm. the workforce with the skills that are necessary. And that's where a lot of our learning initiatives come in in partnering with those areas. Um, as you know, the skills that are gained in the military mm -hmm. sometimes don't have the certifications that you would get by going through a normal school. So we partner with the universities and the different schools in the California area to help look at sort of their work, mm -hmm. how that fits into the school, and then bring them back in. So for us, again, community involvement is critical, and those performance metrics, all of that goes back to what Stephanie talked about, about the employee engagement. 
Without that, we wouldn't be successful. How do you get buy-in from your leadership, and how do you get support for your work? Um, I think in today's healthcare world, as, as you all know, the typical cycle, economy gets tight, um, organizations, especially in healthcare, they start to step back away from those things that aren't really directed just at a patient. Mm -hmm. I think we are different at Scripps Health in that our Chief Executive Officer, Kristen Gorder, has a vision. Mm -hmm. And in that vision, his focus is ensuring that having the right employees with the right skill and ability to provide the best quality care that they can is his mark of success and his ability to continue to have a successful organization, both from a financial as well as from a community presence. So he is one of the few CEOs around the country that is really reinvested in learning. Mm -hmm. uh, we are given full support to provide programs that um, have a learning focus that are in alignment with where we go um, for our mission and our vision and our values. Mm -hmm. So I think, Stephanie, we really are very fortunate we that we don't get a lot of pushback on that at mm -hmm. all. We are very fortunate. Our um, CEO, as Veronica mentioned, he sets the bar and the rest of the organization fulfills that expectation. And um, a lot of resources are available for us to accomplish what needs to be done, especially in the face of healthcare reform. Um, he was very proactive to get ahead of the wave mm -hmm. and to begin to look at ways for us to be able to reduce costs, eliminate variation, and to improve care all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that type of leadership, it's not hard for you to really rally behind that mm -hmm. and to make change and to have a difference. Actually, about 18 months ago, Chris created a new structure for us. He took a risk, mm -hmm. went out and did something that a lot of organizations weren't doing, and he turned us kind of sideways. He took us out of the traditional individual siloed hospital uh, model and moved us into a true one scripts vision. Mm -hmm. And as such, he brought um, resources that were living just at each of the sites to um, a, a one scripts presence at the corporate level. Caused a lot of chaos, as you can imagine, but because we have confidence, I think, in his leadership um, and his vision, our executive team is really solid. They're there to help give us that guidance. We've been extremely successful in having the new horizontal alignment work. And as Stephanie said, it focuses back on reduction in variation, which mm -hmm. you know leads to increased costs. Mm -hmm. You repeated it at five different hospitals as compared to doing it as a system. And it's really allowed us to focus on some of the best practices and you know, in today's world, just doing best practices isn't where you need to be. Yeah. You really need to be above the best practice. You mm -hmm. need to be raising the bar, as Stephanie said, and that's what Chris has done. He's raised that bar for us so that we are writing some of the pages in the practices that we think others will be emulating. Mm -hmm. So what kind of practical benefits have you seen? What kind of feedback have you seen from patients or from people in the community? about the impact of the learning initiatives that you are carrying out. Stephanie, why don't you talk a little bit about some of the feedback that you get. Stephanie, Stephanie lives so much closer sometimes to mm -hmm. the people that are participating in the programs. Well, Scripps is a great place to work, uh -huh. and so we really take that seriously to be able to develop our employees mm -hmm. and to make the company um, a place where they enjoy going, especially when you consider healthcare and how taxing that can be mm -hmm. on our workers. Mm -hmm. And we have a number of learning programs that really um, invest in our employees, and they know that we invest in them. And we've also been increasing our programs for dependents as well. No. So not just the employee receives benefits, but also their eligible dependents are also able to access some of the learning programs that we have available. Our community is very um, well aware of the contribution that Scripps makes. Um, we have a number of high school programs that the Center for Learning and Innovation has implemented mm -hmm. that touches a lot of the youth in the area and early pipeline development to be able to get them thinking about health care and careers and so forth. A number of volunteer programs that are out there for the community to be able to give back in the health care system. And as we're growing and expanding, um, we really do have a significant presence. And being a Fortune 100 employer, it is a desirable place to work, not only in California and San Diego, but we are a career destination for others across the country to really see coming to Scripps Health. The career destination piece is, is very important to us because what we want someone to be able to do is to really enter our organization at an early point in their career. And throughout that career lifespan, be able to actually recreate themselves two or three different times. Mm -hmm. We have employees that have started out in very entry-level positions that through our tuition reimbursement programs, 
through the affiliations that we have with the various universities where we have both on-site type of educational opportunities as well as uh, creative programs with them in partnership, people have been able to really grow in their career focus um, through some of the counseling that we do through our Center for Learning. We have a whole uh, counseling process that we use for someone to map out their career. And as a result of that, we are very fortunate in that we have across that career that you could have at Scripps a wide variety of opportunities. Mm -hmm. And as I said, you could enter at an entry level, and some of those entry level people are now some of our senior most executives. So when you have that type of presence across your organization, we were fortunate during all of the economic challenges that everyone was having that we continued to hire. We continued to um, really not have any layoffs uh, at a point in time where it was tied out in the economy and people were doing layoffs. Chris Van Gorder said to us, I don't want anyone to not have a job. So that pushed us to be even more creative with the learning opportunities by looking at talent and truly doing talent management. If Stephanie's role today is doing X and that role needs kind of decrease, then how do we help Stephanie move into a new role? And we do that through our learning innovations and our different programs that we have. So truly, you can come to Scripps and you can live there for 50 years uh -huh. and have a wonderful career, a lot of uh, exciting things. As you get towards the end of your career, uh, at a point in time where you're considering a lifestyle change, uh, we have what we call our, um, our retirement program, which is what we call a staged retirement. Mm -hmm. It means that you can continue to work at a certain level of hours and still maintain a full benefit program. One of the things Scripps is renowned for is the, real, the strength of our benefit programs. It's uh, at a time, again, where people are stepping back, Scripps is really, again, reinvesting in their employees speaks very well to what Chris's passion is, which is our employees are what make the difference. Without those employees, we could not be who we are, which is a one scripts. Well, thank you both very much. We, and congratulation again on both being Learning 100 honorees here, and I hope to be seeing you again many, many years in the future. Well, we hope so too. Yes. We um, fully appreciate the opportunity to participate in the e-learning um, prog uh, program that you have, mm -hmm. and we are excited to be considered uh, one of those really great places to be. We think we are. We're a little biased. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.